Hi, I'm Lippy. And I'm Grumpy. Together we're Lippy and Grumpy Do Podcasting. In this episode, Zoom Queen Jackie Weaver, a dodgy auto trader advert, Zippo lighters and a pizza vending machine. Now, Lippy. Hello, hello. Hello. You've had a bit of feedback after the WD-40 top tip last week. Ooh, check you out. Yeah. Screaming Tomato said, why don't you use Vaseline instead? Oh. And actually, he's got a very good point, but I didn't have any Vaseline to hand, whereas I had a handy can of WD-40 on the shelf of the office. Yes. Which is very close to the bathroom. Mm. Most households, though, probably would be the other way around. They were more likely to have Vaseline closer than... Well, possibly. Possibly. I'm not sure we've got any in the house, to be honest, apart from a really little tub in my toolbox (laughs) for just greasing battery terminals on cars. (laughs) Delightful. So it's got a bit of car gunk in there. So it's I not wouldn't super put that on your fair. skin. No, no, definitely no. not. Don't know where that's been. And Orange Marshall too got in contact to say that he wished he'd heard the top tip the week before, as mm. he managed to take a massive chunk out of his face with the razor. He's had a bit of a accident prone run, has poor old Orange Marshall oh. too. What with his foot and yeah. now with a deformed face. <laughs> so. <laughs> So, yeah, so anyway, so next time you do it, because you will do it again, because we're men and we do that sort of thing, then... um, We do it too, you know. Yeah, but not to your face. Normally to our ankles. Yeah, there must be a better way. Just don't shave, just get super hairy. Or have legs like mine that have no hair. (laughs) Honest, I wish I had got those genetically, but no. No, I have evolved. I no longer need body hair. (laughs) Streamline. Talking of which, I've got a uh, a date with the barbers tomorrow lunchtime. Ah. Uh, I tried to explain over the phone what wife and grumpy had, had done some months ago. That's it. Went, oh dear. <laughs> we'll see what we can do, sir. Funny. Uh, also, following on from last week, when I was doing the notes for last week's show, I looked at the dinosaurs and the two brains topic. Mm. And I found an article in the Smithsonian Magazine, so I assume in it's probably correct, that the double dinosaur brain actually was a myth. Oh. Davros did say second brain or nerve cluster, so he covered himself very well there. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's quite a highbrow article. I'm not going to read it out here. Um, but it's saying that it, the dinosaurs didn't have butt brains, which is the, the phrase they use. For a second brain is a butt brain. Well, it's, it's, it's <laughs> I like that. It's your head brain and your butt brain. <laughs> so I'll add a link to it if you want to have a bit of a read up. It is, apart from the use of the word butt brain, it is quite uh, quite in detail. Yes. So not not one to be not one to read if you're dyslexic. Uh, no, I think you could probably read it if you're dyslexic. But yeah. just if you are likely to fall asleep, then uh, maybe that's not the one for you. And I also mentioned a metal sheet at Dunsfold last week, and I looked it up into a bit more detail. I was hoping to find a photo of it that I could put on the mm. uh, the web page for last week and, and failed miserably. And you can see it on Google Earth. Um, and I, I got as far as bearing into a book on Harrier Jump Jet development, uh, which looks like it's got a one picture with that on there. And if my reading's right, then there was some sort of uh, exhaust system so it would, it would take the exhaust gases away mm. so they could test it and it looks like they've just covered over the whole thing with a big sheet of metal but a friend of mine is is quite an authority on all things Dunsfold so I was hoping to bump into him at the weekend and didn't so I'll have to uh, tap him up for some bit more information just on that text him but I could do but it's worthy of a face to face discussion with a pint of beer I think ah oh, an excuse <laughs> yeah oh, yeah any excuse so, uh, yes, yeah, so if you have a look on Google Earth, you can see it at the west end of the runway. It's uh, a big sort of rusty-looking thing. Mm, big plate. Mm. We've had our usual missive from missive. Davros, and he's talking about gnomes for hire again. You can see the gnome sector diversifying into specialisations, wheelbarrow, shovel, umbrella, toilet-bound holding nose. Not quite sure what that means. No. But, um, yes, we'll leave that there. But many possibilities, so... All action gnomes, maybe that is the way to go forward. And talking of smart seagulls, which I think we did talk about last week. Yes. But can't remember how. Uh, Davros favours the use of nature against nature. Install a large bird of prey to frighten the pests <laughs> off. Well, that, that will do it. That will definitely do it. 
Or an owl. Uh, or the Alka-Seltzer inside a piece of bread trick, which doesn't sound like nature versus nature. That, no. That sounds. And he also mentions that um, a number of our mutual friends are at war with the grey squirrel population. Mm. Uh, when we first moved into this house, or oh, 20... Well, oh, coming off 25 years ago. Yep. We had a uh, series of... Yes, your age and a little bit. We had a infestation of grey squirrels in the loft... And God. they were getting in through the, yeah, the, through the barge balls, which were quite rotten, which we knew about. And we had that done quite quickly. But they also seemed to be able to get th- down the walls through the gap by eating the insulation, <laughs> running across the, uh, well, ceiling of downstairs, and then appearing in the kitchen, having eaten their way uh, around the output pipe from the dishwasher. But Terrorist. new barge balls put paid to that. They Unfortunately, they seem to be using their loft as a toilet which apparently is quite common. They'll have a living mm. loft and a toilet loft, and ours, unfortunately, was the toilet loft. But Yes, yeah, so I understand the war against the grey squirrel quite well. Yes. So last week, Lippy, you seemed to manage to lose all of our programme notes. <laughs> I don't even I, know I'm how for- I did it, to be honest with you. I just um, I have the Evernote on my phone, and I typed something in, and it obviously hadn't loaded. So then when I opened it up on my laptop... It kicked in from my last load and yeah. deleted everything and just uploaded what I had. We had one topic. <laughs> yes, it shouldn't really do that, but no. um, I, I understand synchronization issues like that. But fortunately, I had paid a little bit more and we had the undo option, so we were able to retrieve the notes. Thank so, you. This, for this week, you keep phoning me and asking me to put things on the list. <laughs> no, I don't I'm want not to your be, secretary. I don't want to ruin the. Uh the notes well, use it you know? properly well, use it correctly i don't i thought i did on my phone it's do you know and i don't have the time to open my laptop and type it in and to be honest one of them i was driving and i used my hands free because i was like if i get home i'm going to completely forget and do you know what the ironic thing yeah. is i've forgotten completely forgotten what the actual thing was uh, i can than, remind you other than I the can... line <laughs> So, well, let's start through your list. Let's start with the Brit Awards. Yes. So, oh, yeah. So I I quite like the Brit Awards. It's normally quite a short one. And Jack Whitehall's the host, you know, and he's just absolutely hysterical. I love Jack Whitehall. Um, but they start, they did the opening of the Brit Awards with him and the two people from Line of Duty arguing about something. And then they got Jackie Weaver on. <laughs> And they had Jackie Weaver on the opening of the Brit Awards and she um, evicted Jack Whitehall from the Zoom meeting. And he's there (laughs) going, you have no authority here, Jackie (laughs) Weaver. It was very funny. I I highly enjoyed it. There was a lovely article in one of the papers, I can't remember which one last week, about Jackie Weaver and her her rise to fame, really. Mm. And how the two very unpleasant protagonists have just, well, drops off the council and seem to have disappeared That's how out it of should sight. Be. It should be. So good wins over evil. Yes. And interestingly, Jackie Weaver now has a podcast called Jackie Weaver Has the Authority. Because <laughs> it's her podcast. <laughs> it's her po- podcast. Uh, she's described as Zoom Queen, which is quite something. Mm. And um, uh, we'll be joined by a famous friend and answer all of your big un- answered questions like a couple of agony aunts. So that would be interesting to have a little listen to. I think that's only just come out. Oh, May the 18th. So today, oh. as we were recording, or several days ago, if you're listening to this on a Friday. And actually, the first two are Jeremy Vine Big and people. the Reverend Kate Botley. Yeah. Impressive. I think the thing about Jeremy Vine, because he's worked at the BBC for so long and is technically self employed. Mm. He's got into a little bit of trouble, which is why he's doing a daytime programme and various other bits, just to show that he's not solely employed by the BBC. So I think there's slightly ulterior motive going on there. Possibly, yes. So was the rest of the Brits good? I I saw none of it as well. Well, it was one of the test events for COVID. Of course, yes, yeah. Um, And the nice bit about it was it was all key workers and frontline workers that were in the audience um, so they were having a great time by the looks of it, all drinking and 
all sat next to each other with no masks on. Well, let's hope they don't all go off sick in about a week's time. Well, they all have to have a negative COVID test on arrival. Okay. And then they get tested a few days after to see if, even with negative tests, if anyone comes yeah. out with COVID. But um, it was only 4,000 out of London. That's not... I feel like there's a lot of key workers in London. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, percentage-wise. If you think yeah. about it, I think it's like all sorts. It was NHS, shop staff, mm. delivery people. Like, it wasn't just frontline. It was... They are frontline, kind of, aren't they? Anyway, yeah. And then um, Lewis Capaldi gave a speech that actually pretty much the whole thing was bleeped out <laughs> oh jolly good <laughs> which was i had to watch the actual thing on youtube and he was presenting best british album of the year um for which he's obviously a solo artist and didn't release an album so he slipped that comment in as well <laughs> <laughs> excellent it was funny it was very it was very good it's good for british music i think for the brits I think so. I, I don't think I've seen it since the disastrous year they had Mick Fleetwood and Sam Fox present it. Mm. And that was way, way before your time. I think that might have been well, second or third one very early I on. I think this is Jack um, Whitehall's like fourth or fifth year yeah, doing it. Well, he's very good at that sort of thing. Mm. Um, needless to say, Mick Fleetwood and Sam Fox weren't. No. He's very good at being funny without being rude as well, I think, towards the... He likes to joke around with this this artists at one point there was there is i don't it depends who you are for listening to this there's a band called little mix which is three women two of which just announced they're pregnant so jack whitehall went over to the table and said oh i've got a question here to ask what you've been doing in lockdown but i don't think we need that answering <laughs> <laughs> very good very good so yeah it was very i've i very much enjoyed it good well i, I have a bit of a question yes Having watched the series called Next on Disney, mm. which is very good. I quite enjoyed that. And I think it's only one series, which I think is very sensible. So the premise of the series is some sort of rogue artificial intelligence taking over the planet. Mm. And then there's a scene towards the end where the people that are trying to eradicate this, who've had all this computer equipment in this bizarre warehouse, decide to torch it. So they have a can of petrol lying around as you do yeah. so it goes over all the equipment and then the main character who in nine programs has not smoked a single cigarette has a zippo lighter <laughs> and it got me thinking whenever there's an arson scene there's always a zippo lighter involved and i assume it's because they don't blow out when you throw it into mm. the petrol whereas if you threw a match in there it probably would extinguish before it got yeah. to the, the, the fuel so I understand why you'd use a Zippo lighter, but why do these people all have Zippo lighters when they don't smoke? <laughs> was it a last-minute decision to... can't remember the exact reason. I think it was so that the artificial intelligence or the people that were working for the artificial intelligence couldn't then work out what they've done. Uh... But quite frankly, the, the place was in such a mess, they never worked it out. There was bits of kit all over the place. Yeah, that doesn't really make sense, does it, for him to just have one on him for no reason? No, no, it doesn't, no. And I, I sort of got to the feeling that I thought maybe I ought to have a Zippo lighter. <laughs> just in case I had just, to set light to just something. Just in case you want to burn something down. <laughs> <laughs> I only know one person that had a Zippo lighter, and he did smoke. This is back in the 80s. And it was back when you could smoke in offices. Mm. And he decided... Oh, it's also back when he used to go to the pub at lunchtime. So he got back from the pub, decided he was going to refill his lighter with petrol, essentially. And then uh, struck it and the desk went up. And he sat there. Oh, God. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Slightly bemused by the petrol, which just sort of burnt out. And then, <laughs> unfortunately, the plastic on the top of the desk then started to go. So. Yes, that was quite interesting. But he's the only person I know that, um, that had a That's Zippo lighter. That's a good lighter. reason not to just randomly carry a Zippo lighter. Well, I don't think it's carrying the lighter that's the problem. I think it's randomly refilling it <laughs> in appropriate places. True. So one of the topics you phoned me about was a questionable auto trader advert. And I know nothing about what you're going to say <laughs> now. So I was driving home and I can't... Oh, it was quite late, I think. So I don't listen to Radio 1 after like five o'clock because the music's too much for me. I can't handle it. 
So I put on, I, it was either, I think it was Eagle, but it's not called Eagle Radio anymore. It's like Greatest Hits. Yes, it's changed hands. Anyway, it's it was not, it was a radio station that um, has adverts. So I was listening to some adverts and one for Auto Trader came on, which I didn't know it was Auto Trader until the end. But it's very on the edge for considering it was probably only like five o'clock, six o'clock in the evening. And um, it's an advert about wanting a couple wanting to add another set of keys to their bowl. Really? <laughs> yeah. It's a f- and then saying going down that line a little bit and then saying how they looked on auto trade and I was in the car like sorry what that is a bit weird it's a bit on the edge isn't it and I'm almost certain if you google it it's called auto trader swingers advert well let's have a look shall we yes it's on vimeo yeah I'll put a link that is very strange I have to say it just took me very much by surprise and I thought oh I used to live in East Grinstead, which was renowned for that sort of activity, <laughs> apparently. The squash club in particular. Mm. <laughs> so they'd appreciate your, mixing it. Mixing your keys in the bowl. Uh, yeah, very strange. Very odd. Well, that was worth a phone call, I think. Because, Definitely. Uh, it'd be interesting to have been in the meeting when they came up with that idea. Yeah, and thought it was funny enough to... <laughs> Or appropriate. <laughs> a, bit, a bit weird. I suppose it will appeal to some people, and maybe that's that's where they're going with it. Yeah. Well, it's appealed to... I thought it was hilarious, so it appealed to me in that sense. Hmm. Obviously not in the other sense. Yes, moving swiftly on. Yeah. I had another thought whilst watching one of my favourite films, which is Hot Fuzz. Mm. And there's the scene where they're watching the movies on the settee. Yes. And it's, I think it's Bad Boys 2 and Point Break, I think. With Is that Reeves. the one where they shoot in the air? Yeah. Yes. Now, it's a shooting in the air that got me. And I'm sitting there thinking, well, if you shoot in the air, the bullet goes up, it's got to come down again. And if you fired straight up in the air, would it come down and hit you? I mean, I don't think it wouldn't hit you with as much force as it would if it was coming out of a gun. That is correct, yes. I don't think it would it's, impale you. I don't think it would uh, well, that's, high that's interesting that. because then there's the, I read a whole load of articles about the speed of a bullet or how fast it needs to be going to break the skin. Mm. And it seems that it's going too slow because basically if it goes straight up, then it will get up as far as it will go, run out of steam, and then it will turn and it will come back down again. And then it's purely Gravity. under its, under gravitational yeah. force. Yeah. So the, the, its terminal velocity is generally not hard enough or fast like enough to break the skin. Like flipping a coin. But with a bit yeah, well, there, there used to be this theory that if you flipped a coin from the top of the, what's now, the BT Tower, and it landed on somebody's head, it would kill them. Oh, yeah, I do, I've heard that. Uh, Same with the Eiffel then, Tower, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, almost certainly. Which has always worried me up there, that people had selfie sticks and they were putting mm. their phones out over the edge that they're going to drop it. Whether that's true or not, I don't know, because if a bullet reaching terminal velocity won't penetrate skin, how's a coin going to... So there, there's a bit of a mismatch there, something not yeah. quite right. And there was an article saying people who have died from bullets coming back down again. Interesting. But then there was another one that said, if you don't fire directly outwards, then the bullet will come down again, but it will actually come down faster because it's part of its trajectory. Ah, uh, because it'll come like more so arc. Yeah. So it doesn't actually come to a rest and then come back down again. Interesting. It was... But by the time I'd finished that, it was so late. I was so tired. <laughs> what on earth? That was half an hour. That was. And sometimes that's why I hate the internet. You just go down you have a, one rabbit hole after the other, after uh, the other. Well, this was only one rabbit hole, really, just with a, <laughs> obviously a couple of a couple of deviations. Which reminds me of a conversation wife and Grumpy and I had in bed one night many years ago about the lottery. <laughs> And whether it was better to do two lines on a Saturday or one line on a Saturday and one line on a Wednesday. I don't think it makes a difference, does it? It does. It makes a very, very small difference. You're better off doing two. Two on, on one, one day. day. For sure. Yeah, because assuming they're different sets of numbers, you'd be daft if they weren't. Then for the first line, it's one in something like 12 million. And then for the second line, it's one in 12 million minus one. Because you've eliminated a set of numbers. Oh, okay. So it's very, very minutely 
better. But that was in the days where you had dial-up. So I had to get up, turn the computer on, <laughs> dial up, Google look it, it up. On, yeah, basically. Did you even Google slow. it? Uh, yeah, again, it must have, well, it probably wouldn't have been Google. It would have been Ask Jeeves or something <laughs> along those lines. Very annoying, the internet at times, mm. but it does provide a plethora of answers. It not does. always right. So next on your list of um, staff requests was Puppy's Genius Moving Tip Stroke Idea. Well, that's going to be my top tip. Oh, okay. Yeah. We didn't tell me that. I did. I sent it in the message after. Oh, my But I autocorrected to puppies from Lippy. <laughs> ah, so it's Lippy's it's genius. Lippy's genius. To... But oh, it also no, I feel like I know what this puppies. is. <laughs> you do know what this is. <laughs> I do know what this is. So we'll this save is, that till the end. This is going to take a while, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> but talking of moving. Yes, please do. We may have a date by the end of the week to actually complete which is super exciting if maybe on monday let's go monday next week yeah go monday so we're super duper excited now we've just got one form that's on its way to us that needs signing to be sent back and then that's everything done but to get this form has just been (laughs) like i know it's rude to call people stupid it is very rude but some people just are they're either stupid or they do not give a rat's bottom about how much work they do or like well, actually there are, no, there are other things. a service. They may be overworked. They have, may have personal issues that are taking up a lot of their brain time. Mm. They okay. may not like their job. True. They may not like the people they're working for. There's all sorts of there reasons. There is, but this is just... I think, oh, honestly, it's just got us... It's just wound us both up every time because... We had to wait two weeks anyway to get our um, inquiry through that should have gone through in March when we first inquired. Um, We thought it had and we thought it was running along at the same time, but turns out it hadn't even gone through. And then, uh, so we needed to get the bank to send the remortgage offer to them. And with our new mortgage... They had uh, the bank hadn't sent it through, and I was on the phone to her about something else. And she said, "Oh, while well, I've got you, do you know when you're expecting?" And I was like, "Oh, I've already got it." And she was like, "Oh, that's not good. They should have sent one to us as well." And I was like, "Oh," and she just said, "Give me the account number. I'll give them a call now, and I'll get them to fax it to me, and I'll let you know once I've spoken to them and that it's on its way." So I gave her the account number. Within 24 hours, I had a message from her saying, "All sorted. We've got it now. They faxed it through." Um, I'll send out the next stage stuff to you. Super duper easy. With the remortgage company. Oh dear. We, we told them, oh, we've got the mortgage offer. So like, you just need to ask the bank for it. We told our mortgage advisor, can you let them know to send a copy to them? Which he did. For some reason, I don't know if it was our mortgage advisor that was the one that started it, but we hadn't heard anything from him because he had gone on holiday, which we knew about, which was fine. We hadn't heard anything back from the solicitors to say they had got it, and it had been like 24 hours, and we thought, well, if they're just emailing it or faxing it over, they should have it by now. So she came back to us saying that there was something wrong with the number and that she couldn't get through or that she got through, but they wouldn't accept the phone number she was on, which doesn't make sense. So Chris was like, oh, that's fine. I'll call them. And so he rang the mortgage company and was like, we're just waiting for you to send the offer to our solicitors. Like, has it been sent yet? And the lady on the phone was apparently like, well, we're not really meant to be talking to you. Like, it's either your advisor or your solicitors that we deal with it's not the client directly um she's like but it's fine i can let you know that we posted it yesterday so it's in the post and we were like Mm. okay fine so that was wednesday it got posted still nothing by friday so we kind of messaged them in like can you call them and just ask them to fax it over to you or email over to you so that it's done because we they needed that before they could send out our final paperwork which they didn't do they didn't ring them they said it had they hadn't received it yet so they should they were expecting it on monday they still didn't have it Monday. And we and then they emailed us saying, oh, well, um, if you could give them a call and ask them to email it to us so it's quicker. And we were both sat there like, why didn't you ask for it to be emailed in the first place? 
Like, surely that saved Thursday, Friday and Monday just sat waiting for the post to come when they could have emailed it to you. So we were just a bit gobsmacked. So what I'm very worried about is if you're going to be moving in three weeks, we've got to find something to fill the 10 minute rant that you have every mm-hmm. podcast. for the- It'll be about <laughs> decorating. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's oh, yeah, we'll be able to fill it. And then it'll be Don't about worry, trying listener. to build a bathroom. Pulling down a ceiling and refitting yeah. a ceiling. I need to put a bit of a cap on it. <laughs> we, we can have a renovation segment. <laughs> I think that's a whole new podcast. I think that will be, because I feel like that's going to be stressful. But Good job on my pyjama bottoms, though. Yeah. Very pleased with those. I have been wearing them this week, and they are standing up magnificently. I'm, I'm not a bad sewer. Not a bad sewer. No, I was very impressed with that. You, would, you wouldn't know there'd been a massive hole there. Mm. Very good indeed. And the curtain in the bathroom? Uh, well, not noticed. There. <laughs> not noticed that I sewed no, those as no. well. <laughs> no. No, I know there was some sewing going on, but oh. uh, no idea. Changing the subject quite dramatically. Yes. I watched Have I Got News For You on Friday, which I haven't seen for a very long time. And in the... Oh, I can't remember which round it was. Somebody mentioned about a 24-hour pizza machine. Oh. I like now, pizza. I did a bit of research. Yeah, did a bit of research. And Rome, of all places, has got the first 24-hour pizza-making machine. Well, that makes sense. So, in the, wait, it, it does and it doesn't. It does because the Italians eat quite a lot of pizza. It doesn't because they normally like their pizza quite specific. Well, you'd think they'd sort of show... You know, the, the, we've done a couple of trips to Italy, and the, and the food there is just superb. And they take a lot of pride in how they produce it and, and present it, what have you. And to have one of their staple dishes being dispensed from a vending machine does seem a lot. Anyway, so, started operating on the 6th of April in Rome, and it dishes out a freshly baked pizza in three minutes. Ooh. And apparently there's a little window, so you can see the dough being mixed up, and then presumably the, the toppings put on. But... When you look at these other... Uh, we've been looking at pizza ovens, and actually, stuff does cook in there phenomenally quickly. Mm. It is, it's a three minutes isn't uh, isn't unreasonable. No, if it's already nice and hot. Yes, absolutely. Well, I assume so, yeah. So the Mr. Go Pizza machine, as it's called, so we then dispense the pizza in a box with cutlery. That's amazing. For six euros. What? I know. How much is the actual machine to buy? I want that. Well, to be honest, you'd be better off just buying a portable pizza oven, which are not cheap. Yeah, but I actually. don't want to make it. I want the machine to make it. Yeah, well, you've got to put stuff in it. I would imagine it's very expensive. Mm. I need to go to Rome then. I want to try it out. Go back to Rome. Whereabouts is it placed? Uh, what well, do you want? The full address? Is it at the Colosseum? It's, uh, no, it's on Via Catana. <laughs> Close to Piazza Bologna. Is it a big square? What the pizza? No, the, <laughs> oh, the piazza. Yeah. I think they. I think generally piazzas are square. Mm. Uh, but I'm basing that on uh, the Italian job I think film. I've been there. Where they're having a discussion about it. You think you've been there? Mm. When did you go to Rome? Uh, the October of 2018. Oh. My friend broke up with her boyfriend, and it was a birthday trip for him. So I oh, went instead. Yes. yes. <laughs> Free trip to Rome. I'm quite good at blagging myself a free holiday. My other friend broke up with his girlfriend and I went with him (laughs) to somewhere in Italy. It's sort of on the outskirts. It's the north-east area of Rome. Hmm. So we did the Italian job two years ago and drove, well, drove as far as Naples, actually. So we stopped off in Rome for a couple of days and we did an on-foot tour of the... City mm. rather than or minis. Unfortunately, when we came in, it's uh, quite a, it was quite a long drive from where we were staying down to Rome, so it was quite late, and we were a little bit late for joining the procession. So they do a police escort through Rome, which is is worth the entry fee just on its own. Uh, so we we were pushing it a bit, and so we were with two other cars, and we got separated at traffic lights because the traffic's horrendous. And I was map reading, and I think I missed the turning. So we turned up this road, and there were some gentlemen 
in dark suits shaking their heads at us as three quite vaulty classic minis uh, because we picked up two behind us somehow mm. and went up this road and suddenly we were on St Mark's Square. St Peter's. St Mark's and Peter's. St Peter's, Peter's Square, Square, right by the Vatican. Oh my God. Yeah, St Mark's would have been... And there's lots of... There we getting daggers by this point uh, yeah um, that's so we the just Pope's carried on house you're driving around absolutely well it's his country as well or principality yeah. so uh, yeah so we, we yes we, we very quickly drove past there and um yes carried on and eventually ended up at the uh, the beating point <laughs> yeah that's slightly embarrassing your shot out well interestingly there was a number of our um party got a ticket from the police because they were driving through red lights, because the police were stopping the traffic, and we were driving through red lights. Oh, so that's part oh of the part of the police escort. Oh, surely and then that's they couldn't have actually charged them for that. Well, they they had a good go, hmm. uh, but the organisers it's a mother and son, and they're both Italian. Although Freddie was born in the UK, and um, Julia is is quite uh, quite a formidable character. Yeah. So you you pass it to her, and she sorts it out. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in uh, typical Italian style with lots of arm waving and shouting. Mm. So, yeah, so I surprised we didn't get anything from our little excursion yeah, around through there. the Vatican. <laughs> I've sat there and walked there, but I can't say I've driven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, unfortunately we didn't get any pictures, which maybe is quite a good thing. Mm. Didn't want to stop long enough. <laughs> no. Anyway, I quite look forward to a pizza machine appearing here if it's that good. Mm. Oh, I do like so, a good well, pizza good oven yeah like wood oven yes there's a, there's a van near us that does them on a friday and saturday night and they really are very very good no, they're very simple in terms of ingredients but really tasty i've gone off fancy like not fancy pizzas but like pizzas with lots of stuff on like yeah i had a margarita pizza on sunday night plain old margaritas one of my favorites gets so much cheese on it love cheese yeah well it's just a carrier for cheese really yeah. isn't it Anyway, we know you've got a top tip. Yes, I do. It's a puppy top tip. It's a, pu- it's a lippy top tip. So, from my brain, obviously, thinking about packing, starting to move stuff, and want to make that as easy as possible. So, my top tip is to buy coloured tape, and each colour reflects a room, so that you know, like, yellow goes in the kitchen green glows upstairs and put those on your boxes you know exactly what i think about this top tip so why not use a color marker because it takes longer to find the writing than it does to see the tape no you could do a color marker like a highlighter pen just a line on maybe then you have to get a color the whole box to be able to see it the whole box one line on the top and one line on each of the sides you'll be thankful once you you see it and you um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight half the boxes and you can move those ones and the other half I'll tape and I'll move okay. the taped ones. We'll see who does it quicker. You've only got three rooms. Ah, no, but you have to include the marking up in the first place because that's where I think you win with the marker. It's much quicker to mark it up than to tape it because you've got to tape in two directions. Why? Well, what if the box is on top and you've only got a plain side out? Oh, yeah. Didn't think about that. No. no. And uh, there's no way you've bought enough tape. That insulated tape is quite thick. Oh, is you it? Don't get many, yeah, yeah, you don't get many metres. And it's not particularly sticky either. It's... We have more than three rooms as well, by the way. You told me there's only three colours required. I did, didn't I? <laughs> yes, you did. No, there is only three. There, to be honest, there is only three rooms where the boxes are going. Because... Well, that's... that's Actually, there's that's only relevant. two rooms, really the boxes are going kitchen and upstairs into the third room you've over engineered for a problem that really doesn't exist. i was really excited about it and thought it was a great well, idea okay it's, it's it's not what what if the movers are colorblind well you're we're not hiring movers are you colorblind yes actually you are <laughs> yeah if it's red and green uh, blue and green rather there might be a bit of a problem we won't use the blue one then we'll go blue red and yellow <laughs> well it'd be interesting if listeners have experience of marking up boxes other than right in the room where they're going on the top i feel like you, you have to find to that them. then don't you, you know, well, I, pass the boxes like what if someone passed you a box upside down what are you gonna do then 
turn it the right way up because it shouldn't have been upside down anyway. Here, all the contents drop back again, <laughs> breaking as they go. And then say, do you want this straight in the bin? Yeah, true. True. You do realise I'm going to ask every time I pick up a box. No. What, I'm, what making you a car- I'm making you a colour card. Well, I might have to take the glasses and off. And it's going to have a lanyard so you can go around your neck. And then all you have to do is pick it up and look. Just right on the box. No. Nope. Do I mean, it my colour you've got tape. To put, all you've got to put is one letter. If there's a, if it's either this room or that room, all you've got to do is put one letter on it. Or a symbol. We're just, we're anyway, ahead. moving on. <laughs> moving on. I've got a fun fact. Have you? Nothing to do with moving. That's good. Hurrah. The world's shortest commercial plane journey is only 53 seconds long. Yes, that's right. What? 53 seconds. But what? What? Known Yep, 53 seconds. Known as the Logan Air Westray to Papa Westray route, the passenger plane flies between the two Orkney Islands, Westray and Papa Westray, in Scotland. The flight covers a total distance of 1.7 miles. Why wouldn't you just drive it? I think it's the one where they land on the beach, so they could only do it at low tide. Uh, Is there not a boat? Well, there possibly is a boat, but there's also a plane. Crazy. And... uh, if memory serves me right, it's a twin otter, which a friend of mine who used to be a commercial pilot always refers to as a twatter. Twatter. It's a twatter. That kind of seems like a pointless plane journey to me. <laughs> well, presumably it's not, otherwise they wouldn't run it. Oh, yeah, I'd assume there's no other way of getting to the other island. Well, as you say, possibly a boat, but um, maybe it's one of those things that has been inherited from different airline firms mm. over the years. Interesting. That is a fun fact. It is a fun fact. It'd be interesting to know how much it is. I might do a bit of research. That's it for this podcast. Thank you so much for listening. You can help spread Lippy and Grumpy's view on life by leaving a review on your favourite podcast platform. If you're not sure how to leave a review, or if you download from Spotify, there's some help at lippyandgrumpy.uk slash review. And if you would like to get in touch, email podcast at lippyandgrumpy.uk. So it's goodbye from me. And goodbye from him. Goodbye. Bye.